clarify this constitutional conundrum is Bob Ward. He is the deputy director of the Rockefeller Institute of Government. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure, Liz. So who's right, or are neither of them right, in this particular question on the lieutenant governor's powers? Well, the Constitution says a couple of things that are relevant. Number one, the Constitution says that the lieutenant governor shall preside over the Senate and have a casting vote therein which has always been interpreted to mean a vote on procedural matters. Well, what is a procedural matter? Right. That is a key question here. Uh, the second thing that the Constitution says is that each house of the legislature uh, shall make its own rules and uh, be the, effectively the sole judge of what those rules are. Well, what is the house of the legislature? The house of, each, the, house of the legislature is a majority vote in the legislature. So the rules don't have to be determined on a bipartisan basis. They simply have to be determined by a majority vote. Okay. Well, what we're talking about right now is brass tacks. In other words, they don't have to. But, of course, Dean Skelos has made a lot of noises about how much bipartisanship he's going to bring back to the chamber. He said it even before uh, the elections sure. actually took place. So there's two different things happening here. There is an actual... Uh, a mechanical situation, I mean, what the Constitution says and what is legal and the, and the legal potential interpretation of that, and then subsequently what's going on at the political level. So let's deal with the first one first. Uh, a casting vote um, has to do with procedure, and that has to do with most motions to discharge. I mean, that's what we've seen Bob Duffy uh, in the three and change weeks that he has been in charge, presiding, standing at the dais and presiding with a little gavel and um, ruling on motions. That's procedure, correct? Right. Okay. So what the Senate Republicans want... Well, but that is not a casting vote. Right. That is simply uh, the presiding officer ruling on whether... Okay. Uh, so, so what is a casting vote? Well, a casting vote is when... Um, uh, the presiding officer actually casts a vote, which is a different matter than making a decision as the presiding oh, I officer. I see. Uh, the presiding officer recognizes uh, a certain, individu a certain individual to speak at a given time and does various other procedural things. Uh, but the issue in terms of the, um, uh, the casting vote and the, uh, uh, the matter of the rules, um, as you said, is in one sense a constitutional and technical matter, on the other hand, a political question. And uh, you have to wonder whether the people of the state are going to ultimately care about the political matter, probably not. Yeah. Uh, the other question then becomes, uh, how does that procedural question play out? Would there be a, uh, an appeal to the courts? Well, the courts traditionally have been a little reluctant to get into the real nitty-gritty of uh, the rules of, uh, of legislative bodies. Right, we saw that with the coup. Exactly. So uh, this could really boil down to a question where the majority rules and whoever has the majority at the time is able to uh, establish the rules. But we did see the courts being uh, uh, willing to weigh in on the, ch on the question of the lieutenant governor and the governor's ability to appoint a lieutenant governor sure. when that position is actually empty. That's what happened. That's how Richard Ravitch became Absolutely. lieutenant governor. So, and and I think a lot of people, including actually my dad, and we have we had many arguments about this, believed that in fact it wasn't a good idea because it would set a dangerous precedent. And yet the court, the highest court in the state, decided to do that, and now that precedent is set. That's that's it. Yeah. So the court sometimes does surprising things, and. Uh... Uh, hands down decisions that the experts uh, such as your father would not have predicted and most other people would not have predicted. Um, but that was, I think, a, a higher level issue. Uh, should there be someone who was second uh, in the leadership of the state in case of some emergency? Right. Um, that, I think, is a higher order of issue than what are the uh, rules, the internal rules of the Senate itself. So would the courts ever get involved if this were to come to them? Um, I would speculate probably not. I, it's important to think, I, uh, I believe, about the, the concept behind the casting vote. The, the idea of giving the lieutenant governor that power is simply to allow the business of the House to proceed so that if there is a 31 to 31 vote on a procedural matter, you're not at a permanent stalemate. It, it's actually worth pointing out that it wasn't always possible to even have a tie in the Senate. It's the right. addition of, a, of another seat that brought us to 62, right? It yes. used to be 61, and it's actually mathematically impossible to have another <laughs> to have a tie and, in well, that case. Well, before that, it was 60. Right. So, and uh, so it was possible, right? Yeah, so the number has changed over time. And that is probably one of the issues that uh, really ought to be dealt with in, in a broad review of the, the overall Constitution.
but that's probably a discussion for another day. It, do you think, though, when Senator Scalos makes the argument, the reason that he puts forth for doing this, I mean, the political reason is that right now they're at 3230, and it's quite possible that something will happen. There's some older members of the Senate. There are some folks who, you just never know, right? Yeah, somebody absolutely. might take a job. Somebody might be ill. Someone might just be unable to serve for whatever reason, deadlocking the Senate for uh, again. And we saw what happened in 2009, and it wasn't pretty. Yeah. So he obviously doesn't want the lieutenant governor, who is a Democrat, to have the power mm -hmm. to make a decision about who's going to lead the Senate in the president capacity. But when he argues, but Lieutenant Governor Duffy is not an elected senator, and so therefore, why should he even have a say in who presides over the chamber, inter rules the chamber, rather? Do you think that's a viable argument? Well, the Constitution says that the lieutenant governor presides over the chamber. Uh, so there's really no debating that particular point. Uh, there are debates that can be had about the extent to which that power uh, goes. Um, so, you know, one of the issues that um, uh, will, will come into play if we, if we get to that is um, uh, this nature of, the, uh, uh, of a procedural vote or a casting vote. But it, it, the Constitution, when the Democrats say this is a, a black and white constitutional issue, it's really not. <laughs> no, because question. it's never been defined. And, right. and this gets us back to uh, what I know you uh, and many of your guests have talked about and people talk about at the national level, the fact that politics these days, because uh, the nation as a whole and right now New York State in its Senate is so closely divided, uh, that the very technical nitty gritty of politics can sometimes become all encompassing and, and take all of the attention away from the policy questions that uh, really are ultimately much more important to the people. Yeah, we've seen it at the national level with a lot of um, a, a real increase in the use of filibustering. And we've also seen a pushback by Senator Kirsten Gillibrand trying to end the capability of doing that, trying to force transparency for people who put a secret hold on a vote. Yeah. In New York at the Senate, we saw. Um, I don't, I don't know exactly how to say this without sounding too harsh, but the Democrats had been out of power for a very long time, and they were not quite up to speed on Robert's rules, I think. And the, and, the, and the technical way that you run the chamber has always been, there are some very strong people who understand how to do that. Tom Libis, for example, Absolutely. is quite good at it. And you see that they have an ability to really rule things when they know the technicalities. That's how the coup took place. Yes, and uh, for better or worse, uh, being skilled at the game of politics sometimes ends up trumping other things. Um, now, I think a lot of people would say that the Senate Democratic majority uh, of uh, most of the last couple of years not only was not very skilled at the uh, procedural matters, but was really not very skilled at simply the business of developing policy and, right. and enacting policy. So uh, a lot of people think that they ultimately will take the chamber back at some point simply because of the demographics of the state. That does seem likely. But um, uh, one would hope that by then, perhaps uh, they will have learned some things from uh, these recent years. Yes, well, they're certainly getting schooled at the moment. Yes, <laughs> I want to thank you very much, Bob Ward. It's good to see you. My pleasure.